I'm Ross Minus Wallace. Uh, I'm a consultant psychiatrist uh, in Poole, um, and that, so that, that, that's the, the main part of my work. I'm also, as James said, medical director, which is a, a management role within the, the main mental health trust, or the only mental health trust in Dorset, which is Dorset Healthcare. But my, my day job, and I've been a, a consultant now for, for, for about 20 years, is, is, is looking after patients uh, in pool uh, in the community. And, and I look after a mixture of patients with, with other members of the team. And the talk today being on schizophrenia, I, I should imagine probably about one in five of the patients I look after have schizophrenia. So, so, so not the majority. Um, the majority of patients I see have um, depression and anxiety, severe depression and anxiety type symptoms, but about one in five of the patients that, uh, that I look after um, have uh, schizophrenia. The, uh, I, I, if when I'm going through the talk there, there's something that you absolutely want to, to stop me on and say, well that's rubbish and I disagree with that and it's outrageous, you, you can stop me, but probably otherwise um, there will be plenty of time for questions at the end and I'm happy to take any questions on schizophrenia and, and more broadly. Um, uh, as James said, in fact, it is very good news, the announcement today um, about increased resources for, for mental health. Um, mental health has uh, uh, is, is always been the poor relation of physical health. It's estimated that about 22-23% of the morbidity, that is the disability caused by health-related problems, 22-23% of all disability caused by health problems, caused by mental health problems. So nearly a quarter of, of, of people who, who struggle, uh, struggle because of mental health problems. But the amount of money that's spent uh, on, on the NHS is about 11%. Um, so that, that is, 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 is clearly disproportionate. Mental health has always been the poor relation. And, and the, 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 the positive news coming out of the Lib Dems, it, it's a pity that, that it's unlikely they're going to get back into government, isn't it? But, but, but the, 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 the good news is, 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 is very much a, a focus on, even within mental health, the poor relation in mental health has been, has been children's mental health. Um, and, and, and with schizophrenia, as with many other conditions, if you can get in early, you can actually make a, a more of a difference than, than if you've got in late, and, and actually putting more resources into that is going to be enormously helpful. So, <coughs> what I'm going to uh, I, I mean is, is I don't give you a, a lecture on, on schizophrenia, but, but there's lots of myths about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is seen as quite a frightening condition by the general public. It, it actually doesn't get a very good press. Almost the only time schizophrenia gets mentioned is in the context of, 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 of some dreadful event, um, a homicide or, or, or a suicide. Um, and I, I'll come to, 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 to how fair that is later. Um, but I just thought we would, I, I, I'm structuring the talk around these, these thoughts of, about schizophrenia. Um, um, actually, what is it? How common is it? How do we treat it? Um, is it just about mental health problems um, and, and, and coming to the end of, of people with uh, uh, schizophrenia are, are dangerous? Um, and, and within that, I hope you, uh, you'll get, to get a, 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 an understanding of, of, uh, of, uh, of what the disorder is. And, and, and actually, this is a, probably the most common uh, perception of what schizophrenia is, that it's split personality. And it's just complete nonsense. It isn't split personality. It's, it's, it's nothing to do with Jekyll and Hyde. It, 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 uh, interesting to know where, where that has even come from. But, but schizophrenia is, 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 is absolutely not. So if you just take one thing away from today, well, there's two things. I'll come to the, the one at the end, and that's about how dangerous patients with schizophrenia are. It, 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 isn't about, it isn't about split personality. It, it, it is about, so that's, that's, that's what it isn't about. What it is, uh, it, it's, it's a condition um, uh, which, which has a variety of, of, of symptoms, um, just like other conditions have symptoms, just as, 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 as if you have diabetes. What is diabetes? <laughs> diabetes is, uh, are, 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 are people that, that have, um, they have low sugar when they feel faint and dizzy, um, they have high sugar in, 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 in which they, they, they drink lots, um, and at worst they can go into a coma, um, it causes problems with, uh, with various disorders, with, with your eyesight and, and, and your kidneys and all sorts of, and, and your heart. Um, the, 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 the advantage of diabetes is that there's a, there's a test for it, and that's the difference with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia has symptoms like other disorders, but, but, but actually, as I'll come to in a moment, that there, there isn't a test. But the symptoms are these. 
we divide them into positive, negative, and, and, and cognitive. Now, if I just give a bit of an explanation of those, the positive symptoms are those <coughs> symptoms that, that most people don't have. Most people don't have. Not everybody, though I'll come to say that, but most people don't have. And they, the, 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 the two most common are, are, are first of all, hallucinations. A hallucination is when you perceive something that is not real. So you hear a voice when there's nobody there. You see something when there's nobody there. So you, you have a perception, so it's sort of, and it's largely about voices, but not always. They can be seeing things like there's a perception when there's, there's no stimulus, is, is the definition. And most people don't have that. Um, uh, the, the, the second positive symptom that most people don't have are uh, delusions. A, a, a delusion. Is, is, is a false, fixed and unshakable belief that isn't true. And so the most common, the, the, the simplest delusion is that I could believe that I was being, uh, I, I, I had a, a, a transmitter inserted into my brain um, from a, a, a Martian, and, and, that was, and that was transmitting information out. And so for, most people would think that wasn't true. Um, and, and if I really believed it, that would be a delusion. But it becomes a bit more tricky um, when you actually think, well, what, what, what about if, if I thought I was being followed by MI5 and they were tracking me? Now, that could be true. Um, and and, and, and as, as, as a doctor, then you have to make a judgment. Is it true or is it not true? And I had a, a, a patient um, who thought he was being followed by the police. Uh, I didn't think he was, but he was. Uh, he had he'd come in from Zimbabwe to the country from Zimbabwe, and I was never entirely sure that there wasn't some political uh, processes being involved in. And there, there, you could have believed that he was being followed by the police, and certainly you've got all sorts of things he was being followed. He thought by the people in the Zimbabwean embassy, and that, that I found that, that there was. And so then you have to make a judgment. Well, how how real is that? What, and, and how do you do it? Because both those things could be true, unlike the man from Mars. Um, you then start having to say, well, what's your evidence? Well, why are you saying that? And um, uh, depending on you say, well, I've, I've seen people writing things in there, writing things down, um, or you think, well, that might be true. Um, the apartment is being bugged. Um, that, that might be true, but is, is, is less likely. Um, what becomes even, even less likely is that they, 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 that, um, uh, as they read, people read significance into untoward things. So uh, people are, 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 are drop their drop 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 their keys when they're passing, and that's a signal. Of, 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 and and you think, that that doesn't sound like likely to be a, a, a signal to, 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 to another operative. Um, that's likely to be that's likely to be delusional. So so. Hallucinations, these false perceptions, delusions, false beliefs, and then the, the third one there, which actually comes out, is, is people have disorganised thoughts. Well, lots of us have disorganised thoughts from time to time. Um, but people with, with schizophrenia, um, sometimes we find it very difficult to, to plan from A to B to C, to, 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 to organise their life so that actually they can actually just get up in the morning, get themselves dressed, get themselves out to an activity. Things that you might, that other people find reasonably straightforward, they, they struggle with. And sometimes when they're talking, their flow of conversation, suddenly they're talking about something that the Queen is, is, is having tea today. There's, a, there's a, 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 just a disjoint in, in actually what's, what's and, and, and so that's just a sign that, that the people's thoughts aren't right. So these are the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Interestingly, although people don't usually have them, when you do studies in the, in the, in the general population and ask people whether they ever experience these sorts of uh, you find that, uh, that about one in twenty have. So although we talk about them as being unusual, not, not found in, 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 in the normal population, but you actually get, actually there's, there, there's a significant number of people have slightly odd, odd experiences, often when they're a bit, perhaps a bit tired, perhaps they're a bit stressed, um, uh, that people have, have odd experiences. So it's not completely unusual. The other group of symptoms are negative symptoms. And, and by negative, it, it's not that they're being difficult, uh, and that's sometimes one of the problems with the negative symptoms, but, but they, they, they are symptoms that uh, um, uh, re reflect people not, not doing things that they would otherwise normally do. People struggle with looking after themselves properly. They, 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 they're, they're poor self-care. They withdraw from um, uh, social activities. They, 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 they lack motivation. 
Um, they, 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 even their emotions are, are, are lacking. They don't get either very upset or, 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 or very cheerful. A sort of a, a, a blunting and a sort of closing in of how people are. And very interestingly, when you talk to relatives of patients with schizophrenia, it's these symptoms that are actually much more uh, difficult to cope with because people do cope with when their nearest and dearest have these delusions and hallucinations because they recognise them as being ill. They think, oh, I've got uh, the poor person, it's really, really troublesome if somebody's, they're hearing a voice in their head all the time. Um, but actually, somebody doesn't want to get up in the morning, well, is, is, is that illness or is that, is that laziness? And, 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 and so the, the, the difficulty that, that, that relatives of people with schizophrenia have is often related to the, 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 the negative symptoms. And then the, the final um, uh, set of symptoms are, are related to thoughts, that, that, that people, um, uh, like the disorganised thoughts over the positive symptoms, people actually with schizophrenia can have problems with, with, with their memory, their ability to plan, um, and their ability to, to make decisions. And there's, there's, there's a clear link between <coughs> schizophrenia and those, those thought, thought problems. And so it would be reasonably clear, I think, that, 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 that actually, um, uh, Patients with schizophrenia actually cover quite a could cover quite a broad area. So, so there's all these symptoms. How do we bring them together uh, uh, as, 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 as a doctor to, to make the diagnosis? And it is completely straightforward. Uh, and if I just explain what this is, what the first rank is, to, to make a diagnosis of schizophrenia, you need one type of symptom that is so odd that really nobody could have it. So my symptom of because uh, it's completely impossible. My symptom of um, uh, the, the man in, 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 in Mars having put a transmitter in my head while I was asleep. That is completely impossible. If I really believed that, that would be enough um, to make a diagnosis of schizophrenia. That's such an odd belief. There are some types of hallucinations that are so odd. Um, not that the one Hallucinations of people talking to you are, are, are less common. So if, if I was if I was he, in my head hearing, oh, Lawrence, this is a dreadful talk, um, and everyone in the audience is bored, and they're looking bored, um, that, that, if I said, that, that, that isn't enough. But if, if, I, if I had a couple of people in my head both talking about to me and saying, oh, he's a wicked person, um, and the other one said, yes, I think he should be punished. They said, what should we do to him? Um, uh, 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 let's throw water over him when he goes out of the, out of the building. That sort of, that, that two-way conversation in your head is, is actually much more odd than the, than the, the, the first example. Because the first example, you can actually understand, well, if you're anxious, you could start having those feelings. And actually, more anxious you are, well, when does a thought become actually a voice? And sometimes, so th that isn't enough. So it's one very odd and impossible symptom or two of, the, of, 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 of that more broad, broad group of symptoms that I've just talked about. And they have to be present, and it depends. Some people say these symptoms have to be present for only a month. Some people say it has to be for six months. And clearly more people will be diagnosed with schizophrenia if you say it's only for a month or, two, or six months. Uh, and the symptoms have to be present most of the time. So just having fleeting odd thoughts is, isn't, isn't enough. They have to be there for, for most of the time. And then is there a test? Well, we told you the answer to that. There isn't a test for schizophrenia, but it might be. Uh, uh, when I started training, it might be that there will be one at some point in the future. When I started training uh, as a psychiatrist, uh, we, we, I was taught that actually the, that there was the brains of people with schizophrenia were no different from, 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 from the brains of people without schizophrenia. There must be something happening in there. Um, that's now changed. Now, I, 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 but there, are, there are differences in, in, in people that have a, a, a schizophrenic illness to those that, those that don't in a couple of areas. And uh, these are head scans uh, of two, uh, two, uh, two lots of patients um, who are identical twins. And a lot of the studies of schizophrenia have come from identical twins. Identical twins would expect things to be identical. They're, 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 they're genetically identical. Um, and so if there's a difference, um, that, that, that is interesting. And, and, and what we have here is the two identical female twins. This is the person who doesn't have schizophrenia, the twin who doesn't, and this is the twin who does. And what you can see even as the background, that the spaces in the brain here are bigger than the spaces in the brain there. And so there, 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 there's a clear, that's quite a major uh, uh, sign that there is, that there, there's a difference between uh, the brain of uh, somebody who has schizophrenia and the brain who doesn't. And, and, and exactly the same thing <coughs> with, with a man here 
the, 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 the spaces in the brain of the well, uh, the well twin, are, are, are smaller than the spaces in the brain with the, uh, the unwell twin. And looking into, uh, into slightly more detail into that, now, we're not going to be able to, to, to see, 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 see all of this, but actually, where in the brain is, 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 is there a problem? The, the, the area of the brain which has a problem with schizophrenia is right in the middle of the brain, the areas that deal with our emotions, um, called the hippocampus. And, and this is your brain section. It's right there in the middle of the brain is the hippocampus. And all I really wanted to show you here is the difference. This is a patient who is well, and this is their nerves in the brain, in quite an, order, a, a, an ordered pattern. Um, and, and actually, the, this one actually is a brain of a patient with schizophrenia um, uh, and, and, and a very disordered pattern of the cell. So uh, what I'm actually saying is that there, uh, that there is a difference that we can see both on scans and that these are taken from patients who, who have died. Um, when, when you actually look at the cell, <coughs> there, is a, there is a difference. But that doesn't mean that we're yet able to, to, to actually have that, any test. We can't do that blood sugar test that you have with diabetes. But there is something happening in the brain that we can see on a, on a, on a physical level of, of difference with patients um, who, who have a schizophrenia. Right. How common do you think schizophrenia is? How common is it? One in a hundred. One in a hundred. Oh, there we are. That's the answer. It's, it's one in a hundred. I wouldn't be surprised if, if many of you didn't know somebody that had actually got schizophrenia. There's, and I just, just a, a completely outside, uh, there was someone I was a school <coughs> with, at a story form in the sixth form, uh, totally well, and then um, went to university and had a breakdown, um, and he had schizophrenia. And that's just somebody that was in my class at school and in sixth form and fourth school. There would be about 150 people in each year, so you'd expect, um, you'd expect at least one. And then when I went to, uh, to university, uh, there were only six of us at the, at, the, at the college I was at, and actually one of one of them actually had a breakdown and um, developed schizophrenia. So this is this is something that it actually it, you're very likely to come across the, the knowledge of, of, of someone that has schizophrenia. And the great difficulty people with schizophrenia, is that then because of the, because of the social withdrawal, because of the stigma, um, they, they then sort of lose contact with their, the, the, the friends that they, they, they would have had normally, um, and, and it becomes much more difficult. So, so don't then see what, what happens to, uh, to, to these individuals. But it, 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 um, it, is, it isn't that, 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 that rare. And in fact, it's, for example, it's more common than, than diabetes. Men and women are equal, and I'm going to show you something about that. And, 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 and the main age when it starts is, 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 is young men is, is, is more common in the early years, but, but, but 15 to 45, but it, it, it's, a, it's a, 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 an illness that particularly becomes apparent in, in uh, early adult life, particularly for, for, for men. For women, it's, it, it comes later, and there might be something slightly different about women who get schizophrenia later, but it's, it's, it's very much that, that uh, when people are just starting the onset of, of, of their, their adult life. And actually, we look at the prognosis, that's how well people do with schizophrenia. The later you get it, the, the better, because if you get it early, it, it, it can have such a, a difficult effect on, uh, on, on, on your ability of making relationships, of studying, of getting a job. It, 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 it can be, it, 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 it causes more of a problem for individuals who get schizophrenia early than those who get it late. Interestingly, um, the risk is, 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 is similar in, in, in different countries. It's, it's, uh, um, no, no different in India, Nigeria, and Africa to, to, to uh, uh, Western uh, uh, European European countries. Although the impact is different in, in, in different countries, because clearly the healthcare systems are very are very different. But the, 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 when you uh, if you look at the, the, the uh, it, it's about the same. Unlike, for example, eating disorders, which are much more common in, in uh, Western European Western. And this is just a, a slide just to show that these are people, this is uh, uh, when people are <coughs> aging, which is a hospital, which is a crude science history, we 
we don't do a bit every week. This is the ages. So this starts at 15 to, 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 to 19, and then in five-year blocks. And the, the, the purple graph is, is for men. And as you can see, men are much more common in the early years. That, that, that's when more men are being admitted. Um, and then women become more, more, it becomes more common later on. And so this, 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 this issue, which is interesting, never really resolved as to why men are more likely to get schizophrenia early and women are more likely to get it later. So what are the causes of schizophrenia? You, you, there is a genetic cause, um, with, without any doubt. Um, and again, when I started uh, training, and they were it was very exciting, they started finding genes for schizophrenia, and found genes for schizophrenia, very exciting, and it, could, could, you then, uh, could you then treat it? Um, in, in fact, they find lots and lots of genes for schizophrenia now, and, and, and actually what we know is that there isn't just one single gene, it's, 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 it's lots of genes. Um, but, but actually, if, if you look at, uh, at, at your chance of getting schizophrenia, it very much depends on how closely you are related to, uh, to, to, to somebody. The, if, if you have an identical, so this is the general population, so which is just about 1%, so if you 1%. If you're an identical twin, if you're an identical twin has schizophrenia, it's, a, it's, it's about 50%. But that's interesting, isn't it? Because it, it means that although your risk of developing schizophrenia is, is hugely increased, so it's increased by 50 times, it's still not 100%, because these are identical twins, so why, why, why are they 100%? Um, why is it 100%? So it is, it's clearly, although genes are important, genes aren't the, aren't the, aren't the only thing. Um, there is something, the genes must give you a vulnerability to developing schizophrenia, but they don't mean necessarily that you will develop it. And the rest of it really just depends how close how close you are. So if you have uh, one parent who has schizophrenia, it's about seven or eight percent. A parent who has children with schizo schizophrenia, it, 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 it's uh, it's it's in increased to about twelve percent. Brothers and sisters uh, with schizophrenia um, uh, are about the same as twins who are who are um, who, are, who who aren't identical. But it is interesting as to why identical twins is still only about 50%. So there are other factors, but what, what might those be? Now, all you have to know about this slide is that if you have an odds ratio of 1, it means that, 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 that there's no difference. So anything that's odds ratio of 1 means there's no, no difference. So if any, all, all these are greater than 1, means that if you have, for example, uh, you're born in the winter, you're more likely to develop schizophrenia than you're in the summer. But the fact it's only just over one means that it's only just more likely. And there's a, why that's important is that there is something about developing infections. Um, uh, 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 it's the, the uh, mother, this is, this is the mother developing an infection. There's something about the mother developing an infection um, pre-birth. Um, that increases the risk of schizophrenia, uh, particularly with rubella, that's German beetle. So, and that's why the winter, that's why the slight increased risk in the winter, because the, um, uh, that, that's when it will have to develop infections. So there's something about infections in the mother. There is something about problems, um, uh, other problems uh, 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 around the birth. <coughs> uh, it's interesting, a bereavement. Uh, but famine, uh, major disasters clearly cause stress in the mother. There's something about the mother being stressed that increases your chance of developing schizophrenia in later life. And there's something about what happens in, in the birth, if, if there are problems with the birth. So there's, there, there's the, the child is small, the mother develops an illness, the, 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 the child has a cord around its neck and, and develops a lack of oxygen. Um, all of those will increase the risk of schizophrenia in later life. <coughs> all very small risks, because actually lots of mothers develop infections and the child doesn't develop schizophrenia. Um, lots of mothers are stressed at the time of birth, the child doesn't develop schizophrenia. But when you actually look at that, 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 that's there, there are, um, you, have, you have the genetics uh, and you have a whole series of other things that might influence the influence the, influence the gene. One biggest thing that you can do um, to stop yourself from developing schizophrenia is not to take drugs. This is, this is studies that come from, from Sweden. In Sweden, they still have national service, so, so all young people 
enter the army, and part of entering the army, they're all asked about how much cannabis they consume. And this is the uh, uh, number of reported uh, use of cannabis in the previous month. Um, and this is the case of schizophrenia. Uh, and what this shows is, 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 is low use, um, up to four times the previous month. Actually, there really wasn't much of an increase. But actually, as you start using more, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a very significant increase. And there's a bit of cause and effect here. So is it that those that are taking more cannabis were, 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 were taking the cannabis because they were worried they'd already started developing these old symptoms, and therefore they were taking the cannabis as a way of self-medicating themselves? And it's difficult to completely disentangle it. But I think that the evidence is reasonably consistent now that particularly if you, have, if, if you are somebody who is going to be vulnerable to developing schizophrenia, taking the drug ticks you over. So if we go back to our identical twins, our two identical twins, one has got schizophrenia and one hasn't, if the one that had taken the drugs, that, that, that actually might have been a factor that ticked them over into schizophrenia. If the one that didn't, even though they were vulnerable, they, they, uh, they, they, they didn't have that, that stress that was actually happening in, in their life that ticked them, ticked them uh, over the edge into schizophrenia. Um, and so uh, I, I see lots of young people in my clinic, actually, who, who take drugs. And they, they do sometimes say to me, well, lots of people take drugs. And, and that's true. And most of them don't develop schizophrenia, otherwise the clinic would be completely full. But for some people, taking drugs, if they were vulnerable to developing schizophrenia or psychotic illness, that's, that they are just vulnerable. And the drugs in them actually has a much more devastating effect than the drugs in others. Um, and, 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 and cannabis use is, is, is one of them. But, but the other drugs, cannabis is one of the ones we've studied. Many of the other drugs, particularly amphetamine type drugs, have the same sort of effect um, in actually causing the schizophrenia. Is it insurable? Well, to some it is, and, and, and they need to be clear. Um, that doesn't mean that people can't be helped and helped very significantly, but for some it isn't. Um, and this is the this is the this is the outcome of patients with schizophrenia. There are four four ways of thinking about the outcome. There are some people, and, and this is about twenty percent. So that, that's quite a high one actually. But the, 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 the that have one episode of schizophrenia <coughs> and then they, they never get another one. And they think, well, did they really have schizophrenia? And there's all sorts of things. But, but, but actually, even when you be quite careful about how you diagnose it, there, is, there are a group of people that have one episode, it can be quite a severe episode, people could be admitted to hospital, um, uh, set, uh, 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 and, then, and, then get, and then remain completely well forever. The next group, which is actually a very big group, are those that have an episode, get well, but then actually have other episodes later in, in, in life. So that, that is about a third, this group that actually have episodes. Between the episodes, they are, they are well. And people can be completely well, and that's really important to, 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 to remember. You can be completely well um, uh, uh, with schizophrenia. I have patients in my clinic that are, are, are living with their families, um, being parents, holding down jobs, they take regular medication. Um, I, I, I usually see them sometimes <coughs> do medicine once a year, I don't really need to see them, but if they're on medication, I don't need to check, 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 check out them, but actually they are leading a completely normal life. And then if you think, oh, well, they really need the medication, and then you stop it, uh, and, and, and then you find they have another episode of illness, and so you actually do just think that actually this person is, is, is well and is benefiting from treatment. And so these two groups, just maybe about half, actually have quite a good outcome their schizophrenia. So, so some uh, update and, other, uh, 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 and some can be, uh, can be very well. There is um, a, a, another group um, that, that actually uh, uh, have a, 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 an episode and they never completely get back to normal. And then they have another episode and they never completely get back to normal. So, so the two examples of the people that I knew uh, no, uh, with schizophrenia, <laughs> they got ill in their in their late teens, and they never got back to being able to do what they would have been hoping to do. Um, so, so, so my colleague that that, that that was the medical student with me uh, never never actually got back. He tried to come back, but never actually got back to, to medical school. Um, so that, that there is this this problem, and, and, and the main problem is 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 the, those thought problems that never quite getting 
um, the, 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 the ability to memory problems, the ability to, to plan and retain information remains remains a problem, or positive symptoms remain a problem, or um, uh, the negative <coughs> symptoms remain a problem. And then there's a final group, which is another quite a significant group, about a third, that, that actually really <coughs> remain unwell whatever you do. And so they, 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 they have, their, their episodes get worse and worse, and they, they don't get better. Um, not to say they can't lead uh, uh, satisfactory lives um, and, and do lots of things, but actually they remain unwell. In each episode, they have they, they, they get a bit they get a bit more unwell. So the outcome is very variable, and what we don't know is schizophrenia yet. Because um, as I you might have gathered from when I talked about how we made the diagnosis, that, 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 that are, there, are these different types of illness in many ways? And, and actually, if, if, if I was coming to see you in 20 years' time, would we be saying, well, this is one illness, this is another? And a bit like um, the, the, the sort of uh, uh, 18th century doctor that would come and talk about fever and, and say, well, this is how you treat fever. And fever clearly has lots of different outcomes because we know fever has lots of different causes. And, and, and actually, in some ways, still with schizophrenia, I, I think we're still looking at a, probably a group of disorders um, that, that clearly have things in common, but actually things that are, that are different. And what we can't do easily uh, is separate out at the beginning those that, those that, those that aren't different. Now, this is a big issue, um, and, and, and that is this great worry that people have about the treatment. So you've got this disorder, and, and, and people are, have, have quite negative views about having a diagnosis of schizophrenia, but what about the treatment? Um, and it, it is the treatment worse than the cure. Um, and we, we, need to, like, we need to understand what, what treatments we give. And, and the first thing with any treatment, and schizophrenia is absolutely no different, is you need to people um, and, and educate them and explain what the diagnosis is. And uh, give you a time, there's, there's some controversy about giving a diagnosis. So, oh, do, do you want to, would, 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 would any of us want to have a diagnosis of schizophrenia? And do we sort of, sort of, sort of talk around the subject, say we've had a psychotic episode or, or you know, you've been visited by it not being yourself? Uh, actually, it's quite important if you think the diagnosis of schizophrenia to actually tell patients they've got schizophrenia. So let's tell patients or their relatives how are they going to uh, how are they going to get the information that they need? Because there's a huge amount of information out there in the days of the web. And, and actually, if you, if you don't give people the, 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 the patients the diagnosis, that they, they, they are really being stopped from actually a lot of the, the information and, and, and help and support that they can get. So just like many other personality disorders, another one people hate all Pedro and Gatti giving the diagnosis of personality disorder. Um, but, but actually, unless, you, unless we, doctors were actually clear about a diagnosis and explain why we think that the diagnosis, and explain well that there are problems with it, that's, and there's also negatives <coughs> as well. Um, patients are left in a bit of a limbo. So diagnosis is important. And, it, and again, that's no different from physical illness. When I was a medical student, we used to stand at the end of the beds of patients and, 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 and talk about them, and we talk, used to talk about them having uh, mitotic lesions. And what we meant by mitotic lesion was that they had cancer, um, because that, that, that the cells are, that, that are something in wrong. And we don't do that anymore, because actually if someone's got cancer, actually they, they, they need to know they've got cancer, and, and actually doctors talking in a code isn't, isn't helpful. Isn't and, and, and one thing also that we now do um, is, is, is actually, the, 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 when I write to, to a patient's GP, as I always do, actually the patient gets a copy of the letter, and in that, in that letter it says what the diagnosis is, and, and that, that should never be a, a, a couple of complaints uh, from relatives who say they got this letter from the doctor and they had this diagnosis, and they, they were a surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise, because there should have been a discussion about it. So that, that, that the education information is really important. Um, and, and along the lines of what I was just telling you now, but medication is really important for schizophrenia as well. And there are there are different types of uh, they're, they're called antipsychotic drugs, um, and there's, there's, they're, they're, they've been around since about the 1950s. Um, uh, the older antipsychotic drugs, and then for the last 15 years there've been newer ones. So initially they were called better. Um, they're not better. They're probably about the same in effectiveness. They have different side effects. Come to side effects in a moment. And then some people have their uh, medication by injection, um, and some people have it by tablets. There's no difference in how beneficial it is, whether it's by injection or by tablet. Um, but actually, if, if someone's not going to take their tablets and have the injection, you know that they've had the injection. And there's no difference about the contraceptives. There's some women have contraception by, uh, by uh, an injection, and then they, 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 they take them. Um, but actually, remember, if you take a tablet, whoops, 
remember to take tablets every day, it's very difficult. It's actually difficult, I don't know how many of you have to take tablets every day. Um, the problem is women more than men, and that's why the male contraceptive pills never really taken off, because nobody would trust men to take the tablet every day. Um, I have to take tablets for blood pressure. Um, the tablets I take, I'm pleased to say, don't have any side effects at all. Um, and, and, and when I take them, I, they bring my blood pressure right down to normal, and I forget all the time. I, I, I think they're a good thing. Um, my children are just horrified. They take them because they're like a stroke, and I just, I just, just forget. So I, I forget to take a tablet that I actually you know is, is, is that I should be taking. I have, it doesn't cause any side effects, and, and, and it works, and I forget to take it. So it's absolutely no wonder that our patients don't remember to take their tablets for, for anything. But actually, they, 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 the, the tablets for schizophrenia, although they do work, they work fully, and they do have the side effects. And so, uh, actually, we need to work with our patients to think, well, how are we going to help them take the tablets? The tablet that they, they can take, they see the benefit of, and, and sometimes patients have uh, depo. Sometimes patients choose to have that uh, depo. Um, why don't they take their medication? And there's all sorts of reasons. It was. That, that I went to uh, I, I went to a talk, um, a wonderful talk um, by somebody called Kay Redfield Jameson. And, and if you ever want to read a book about schizophrenia, it's about bipolar disorder. If you want to read a if you want to read a book about tonight about bipolar disorder, it's called The Unquiet Mind. The Unquiet Mind by Kay Redfield Jameson. And Professor Jameson <coughs> is, 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 is is an incredible <coughs> and she's written an incredible book, and, and because it's, it's, it's what she has is, is bipolar disorder, and she is a professor of bipolar disorder at Johns Hopkins University in the United States, the top, and one of the top universities. She's, she's a leading, <coughs> a leading American academic in bipolar disorder, and she talks about her own bipolar disorder, and, uh, and, and she particularly talks about taking medication, and the medication she was taking was lithium. And lithium has side effects. She absolutely knows about the benefits of lithium, and I've heard her speak. And, and, and she we put out slides that show lithium stops people killing themselves. It stops people having many breakdowns. It's not perfect. It has some side effects, but actually has huge benefit. And she describes in the book, and she describes when she talks, and she gives talks about sitting with her psychiatrist. And remember, she's a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist is talking to her about taking lithium, and she's saying, I. I why is he talking about it? I'm not going to take it. I can't bear the side effect. But she wasn't brave enough. She wasn't brave enough to tell us a car. She wasn't. So she just nodded and said yes. And so we absolutely that there is this, this worry that people have that it was she's going to be addicted because she thought she was having a side effect. And the other thing is, she was talking about when she had relationships, she would have to hide the tablets because if the tablets in the medicine cabinet and somebody saw them, would they think she was mad and how embarrassing it would be? And, and so there is this stigma of oh, so when you're on lithium, what's, 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 what's that for? Um, and another problem with the medication uh, 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 for schizophrenia is that actually they're, they're taking it for a long time. And so it's not you take your antibiotics and you get better after five days. You're actually talking about medication you're going to take for months and months, if not years and years. And, and, and who of us want to do that? Um, and so there's this real set, there's a continuing battle of of, of, of the patients having their minds and really working with our patients is what's the benefit and what's the side effect and, and weighing up all the time as to as to where where that balance is and that has to be eventually an individual decision that the patients the patients make. How do they work? How do these drugs work? I'm going to put that slide up because actually the, 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 how we learned about how it works through amphetamines. If, if, you, if you take amphetamines, if you take speed, you will develop schizophrenia-like symptoms. You will develop, you will, you will develop delusions of people who are persecuted. You will hear voices. The symptoms you get when you take amphetamines uh, can be very, very, very similar to schizophrenia. And what amphetamines do is they release one of the chemicals in the brain, dopamine, um, and it's the release of dopamine that causes the symptoms. And the drugs that we use block the effects of the dopamine. And all the drugs that are effective for schizophrenia all block the use of, of dopamine. So there's some suggestion um, that, that, that in schizophrenia there's this, there's this, sort of this, this naturally occurring um, uh, increased dopamine release, and, and that's what the drugs act to prevent. And the side effects are also linked because, as you know, you stop the you stop the, 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 the psychotic symptoms by blocking the effect of dopamine. If you block the effect of dopamine, you also cause Parkinsonism, because Parkinsonism 
uh, which is when you, you, you have the, the sort of shake and the shuffle, uh, um, it, it, it is, is caused by too little dopamine uh, in, in the brain. And, 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 and so the treatment for, for Parkinson's is to give people drugs that cause, cause increased release of dopamine. So you can see how dopamine has effects. One part of the brain, too much dopamine causes um, uh, uh, psychotic symptoms. Another part of the brain, too little dopamine, causes these movement problems that you get. And getting that balance right is, is one of the problems that you have with, with all of the antipsychotic drugs. <coughs> and this is just a, 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 a rather complicated diagram. Um, so, so this is a nerve which has dopamine. Dopamine chemically <coughs> releases from the nerve into what we call the synapse. And what the drugs do is they block what's called the receptors. They block the receptors here so the dopamine can still be released. It doesn't have any effect on the, on the next nerve there because all these receptors are blocked. So that's, that's how all the drugs work, and that's the <coughs> cause of both how they work, and it's the cause of their, of their side effects. And that's just a list of it. <coughs> and how effective are they? Well, they're actually reasonably effective, but not perfectly effective. So, um, about two-thirds respond, so there's still some that don't. They remain on medication, and if they've responded, about two-thirds um, uh, will uh, remain well. Um, if you didn't take the medication, about two-thirds would relapse. So what that tells you is that uh, the medication works, but not for everybody. Um, and if, if you don't take the medication, um, you increase the chance that you'll relapse, but actually you might relapse anyway. Um, because some will relapse anyway, and some won't relapse whether or not they've taken their medication. And if you go back to remember my first slide, there are all those people that didn't relapse anyway, but they just remained well. Um, and so it's, there's always a bit of suck it and see with, with patients. So when I've, I, 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 I've now been a, a consultant here in the pool for 17 years, so actually there's some patients I've, I've now known for 17 years, um, you know those that are, that, for whom medication is working, and you say, look, we've stopped your medication twice now, each time you've got up well within three months, so let's, let's keep going. There's others that actually doesn't seem to make any difference one way or the other, so you say, well, let's, let's stop it, and what we need, then need to do is make sure that we pick up your symptoms really early if you relax. So medication isn't, isn't, absolutely, isn't the whole answer, but it actually can, it's a, it's a helpful part of the helpful part of treatment. And these are the side effects. I've talked a bit about movement side effects. A real problem with almost all the medications people put on weight. Um, and none of us want to put on weight, um, and so that's that that is an issue. There's no no easy answer to it. Um, some some of the medication causes people to be tired and sedated, and there's problems with causing diabetes and, and reduced fertility. But there's probably the biggest issue probably for, for most people because you can deal with sedation is, is weight gain and movement and movement side effects. And that's why people stop. And you have to balance up is, would you rather not have your voices, um, or would you rather be a stone and a half heavier? And those are difficult decisions that people, that people have to make, and they aren't easy decisions. They aren't easy decisions. So, but drugs aren't the only treatment. There are also um, uh, 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 psychological treatments. Um, and I'm going to talk about those uh, for a bit to explain what they are. But they all share a, 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 common, a, a common purpose. <coughs> One, and, and actually, you can be absolutely clear, this isn't either or medication. Actually, talking treatments can be hand in hand with medication, they can both go together. So it's not, well, shall I, shall I take the drugs or shall I have the talking treatment? But actually, the best treatment is both, for most people, is both. Um, and part of what a, a talking treatment is to, to, to work uh, together in a sense of collaboration that, 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 that those that, that the doctors and nurses and other therapists and, 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 and peer workers you're working together. You have the same ends as it's that you have the same ends. Um, physical activity is important. Um, actually making sure that people uh, continue to do uh, social activities, they think about uh, uh, work and other skills. Um, and, and, and it all has a sense that, that actually a bit about positive attitude to the future, a sense of, of, of hope, and actually the recovery movement. Hope is, 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 is really important. To get a diagnosis of schizophrenia, but to get a diagnosis of, of, of many other difficult actually to get a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, to get a, a, a diagnosis of diabetes, um, to get a diagnosis of epilepsy. So all difficult diagnoses to have. In none of those conditions I've given you are, is, are there cures, we can't say we'll get you better. 
But none of them are a, 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 a mean that, that, that this is a hopeless life sentence. There are lots of, lots of things that can still be done. Um, and, and actually that's what, with schizophrenia, we actually have to work with, with, with actually helping our patients un understand that even with schizophrenia, although none of us have wanted it, it's a short straw, that there, 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 there's still many positive things that, that people can be doing to, to, to actually make sure they lead the life they want to be leading. I can just talk about CBTs, cognitive behaviour therapy. Um, these are just three broad principles, and it's going to be a very little, little description of, a, of one symptom. But one thing is to not see that the psychotic symptoms have just been, been an absolute sign of, 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 of madness and being ill. That, it's, that, 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 that there's a, a continuum of, 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 of normality and illness. And, and again, I, I gave you that example of voices in your head saying, oh, oh you, you, you're giving a crap talk. That, that, is, that is on that continuum between being well and being ill. Um, and it's not all or nothing, and that can help in, 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 in CBT. To, to accept CBT, um, you don't have to believe in schizophrenia or the different causes. Uh, or, or you can, uh, uh, what, what's important is actually what symptoms are you having, and how can we help you with the symptoms, and what difficulties are, are you having. Some people hear voices, and actually they, they, they don't mind at all. They describe their voices as comfortable. <coughs> somebody in, in quiet moments chatting away, saying nice things or inconsequential things, it's just part of who they are. Um, others have people actually chatting away, saying actually horrible, denigrating things that are just, just painful to hear. Um, <coughs> one thing that I, I did and I, that, 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 that's actually very interesting is you can put headphones on that actually just uh, are like hearing voices and how enormously distracting it is to actually having these, this chatter going on when you're actually trying to think or trying to speak. Um, that, that's, so so it's, it's, it depends what your symptoms mean to, to, to you, and, and, and that's, uh, that, that's an important bit about CBT. And, and, and if I just give you this, this is a good example to use in a, in a university, if the university at the start of term, it actually has somebody can develop a, a feeling of being got at. Um, and so we start on this path that, that our students, and they're going to have the typical age of schizophrenia, at least home goes to college, they go to college, it's, uh, it's actually stressful, they go away from all their support, their family and friends, they don't sleep properly, they might take drugs for the first time, um, and then they develop um, anxiety, they feel they're different, everyone else is having a lovely time, um, and they're having a horrid time, and there's something odd about them, why aren't they making friends easily? And so when they're feeling odd, um, you start looking at, 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 at ways of, of confirming that. If I just give you another example, I'm afraid you're talking about me talking, but I can, I can look around the audience and I can actually say that, that, that there's somebody in the corner that's closed their eyes, because that's, that's more, more confirmation that I'm boring, that I'm, 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 I'm no good. <laughs> there, there, there's somebody else can, do, 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 on, on, on their iPads, now it could be that they're tweeting great talk, or it could be actually they're answering their email. So you can see exactly how ordinary things are actually, depending if you're feeling stressed and unconfident, start taking on a particular, a particular meaning. Um, you're, you're walking down, you're, you're coming out of your, your, your flat, and, and, and your, 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 your new, new flatmate that you've only known for two weeks doesn't say good morning, how are you, just ignores you, you think, oh, there's something about me, don't think, well, he's never very good in the morning, didn't say good morning to his parents for the last two years. Um, that, 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 that you, 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 you make more of things as, as, as they are. You then come, that, that, that gets you. Absolutely, have a real sense that, 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 that things are going wrong, that you're wrong, that, that, that actually then people not only are, 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 are you're misinterpreting normal events, but you start getting a sense of, of, of um, there's something very peculiar about me. If there's something peculiar about me, are, are there people then talking about me? Are they spreading rumours about me? Um, are they are, are people say, saying um, uh, 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 things so that nobody's, nobody's going to like me? Um, and people are spreading rumours about you, you then might feel threatened, you might feel threatened by that. And what this is, so somebody, a patient might come with this, this, this thing that they're, 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 they're being persecuted, they're being got at, they are, they are seeing people talking about them, and you can then start taking it back and saying, well, let's try and understand this. Let's see if we can get some meaning out of this. They are, uh, what, uh, 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 and so, that is a different approach, that is a different approach, it's a cognitive approach, to actually, okay, what I'll do is I'll give you some medication that actually might make it. The medication might work, <coughs> it's not an or you have some medication, 
but also some, trying to get some understanding of how this type of symptom developed. With voices, um, there can be ways as well, can we distinguish between the voices of people outside, friends and, and others, with the voices in your head, is there a difference? Can we just, can I help, how, how can you distract yourself from the voices? What actually, when are the voices worse? When are they better? Can we actually look at making sure we do more things when they're better and fewer things when they're worse? So that is how we have a, a talking approach to, to both, both hallucinations and delusions. Does it work? These are a whole series of studies of CBT, um, the positive symptoms, negative symptoms, um, depression, and, and total symptoms, and, and actually these are studies, and this shows that actually, by and large, um, uh, patient, patient symptoms improve with CBT. They particularly improve, and that might be the next slide, no, it doesn't. they particularly improve when you give CBT and drugs. That, 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 if you want to get your best improvement with symptoms, you give talking treatment and medication. There's a real issue with families, because particularly with young men, um, uh, they, they, they work with families, and, and, and what we what we know, there, there's something called expressed emotion, and, and, and this is this is work from about 30 years ago of showing that patients with schizophrenia that came from families with high expressed emotion did badly, and they got more symptoms, they had more relapses. Patients with families with no expressed emotion did well with, with fewer symptoms, and what expressed emotion is very simply is is the, the, the Mediterranean of, of people getting very excited and shouting and, and, and laughing and, 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 and lots, that's expressed emotion. Uh, uh, people that are very much, parents and families are very much in your face um, <coughs> compared with a sort of stiff upper lip, don't talk about anything, everything's under the carpet. The, the, the British stiff upper lip, everything under the carpet was better for patients with, with schizophrenia. And so you, if you have your family, Going back to my negative symptoms, who were screaming at their children, "Get up, you lazy so and so! I'm, you're 18, and when I was 18, I was I was out of work, and I'm not looking after you all day." I've been mother coming back, screaming, "The dishwasher hadn't been emptied, and and the the, the, the son hadn't got hadn't, hadn't got washed and shaved," as opposed to those that accepted that that this was part of an illness. And so, what the treatment there is, both is family work, actually helping patients and their fam the families understand. That actually, if you've got schizophrenia, actually toning down the emotion is likely to be helpful. Um, but secondly, actually, what also did if you separated the, the, the parents and the children, not to not so they moved out, but actually took them out of the house. So, so and actually, if it's using people going to a day centre and, and going out for about 35 minutes <coughs> a week, actually it was a really helpful intervention. Um, and that's normal, of course, because actually uh, uh, young people aren't spending all day with their families. Uh, they, they just aren't. And, and it drives drives all. Well. I, 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 my son's just, my friend, has just gone to university this week, and, and um, so it's difficult when your children go to university. Um, but in some ways, there's, it's a bit of a relief because actually it's been quite difficult at times. And, and actually, just home all the time doing nothing, it would be it would be very stressful. So actually, getting patients out of the house. Um, and and uh, 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 doing things with other people is is is, is helpful. Um, and again, family work and medication can absolutely go together. It's not ideal. And that that shows that um, this is the people who relapse. So if you have any treatment, uh, seventy percent of those relapsed with just medication. Forty-five percent relapsed with medication and family work and so over a six month period of 20% relapse. So actually again showing medication and these talking and, and psychological interventions are best, best together. But there's things what people can do and as well as other things I was asked to say, what can people do for themselves? And one is to actually have the people and their families spot the early signs of schizophrenia. And, and these before, like sometimes before voices become absolutely clear or delusions that people start sleeping not so well, they start developing anxiety, but before you get to a clear persecutory delusion, before I, 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 I feel that people are talking about me, um, some people start thinking it's just an anxiety that they can't quite pinpoint. They just know something's not quite right, but don't quite know what it is. And, and that is, 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 is an early sign. And sometimes you know what it is, but oh, I know that I'm being followed, I know I'm being talked about, but the, 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 an early sign is, is, is it's a sense of they're not being quite right. Um, and, uh, personal hygiene at work are, are early signs. They could be early signs both of the development of schizophrenia in the first place, but also of a, 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 a relapse. I've talked about drugs and alcohol. Very interesting. The, the, the people take drugs and alcohol because it actually helps, they feel it helps, but it causes more, more problems in the long term. Patients with schizophrenia 
but uh, six years have had a, a, a drug problem as well, and nearly a third had an alcohol problem. So drugs and alcohol are very common in schizophrenia. I've talked a bit about how to manage voices. Um, being with other people is helpful because it's distracting. Listening to music through earphones is helpful, and actually how you distinguish the voices that 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 is that's, that people describe that as helpful. Solution. Shocking. Um, Forty percent of all tobacco smoked in, 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 in the UK smoke by people with severe mental illness. Forty percent, and in the states, half of all cigarettes smoked by people with severe mental illness. Smoking is, is a real uh, an, a, a, a real issue, and, 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 and actually one of the stick part of the stigma I think that we've had in in, in psychiatry is that. People would go into hospital not smoking, they would start smoking. And, 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 and actually, even with, 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 with that nurses, we're talking about making our hospital smoke free, so we can't make smoke free because actually, we're talking about patients that need to smoke. Well, there's actually more reason why patients with, with mental health problems need to smoke than patients with physical health problems need to smoke. And, and actually, just as likely to die of, 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 of their lung cancer, um, they've got schizophrenia as if, it, as if they haven't. And so the situation that, that actually that all the public health work that's been done on smoking, we're now left with, with smoking is is, 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 is is very much a disorder of, of, of severe mental illness. And, and we as professionals need to do much more in actually help, helping our patients stop smoking. And because um, to have nearly half of all the tobacco being smoked, being smoked by people with severe mental illness is quite shocking, quite shocking. <coughs> I'm going to talk about physical health again in a moment, but, but actually diet, and exercise, and reducing stress is good for us, and, and just as good for patients with schizophrenia. And, and actually, if we, our health is better, our mood is better, and have it, we have a decreased risk of relapse. So there are practical things that can be done for all of us that, that are just as helpful with schizophrenia. And my final thing I'm going to talk about before I get to the violence right at the end is, and clearly I don't think any causes of mental health problems, patients with schizophrenia die on average 25 years earlier than patients without. 25 years earlier. And why is that? And it is almost <coughs> not because of, of suicide. There is an increased risk of suicide in patients with schizophrenia, but almost all that, that premature death is due to physical health problems. And as I've just shown you the figures for smoking, we no surprise um, that, that smoking is a, is a real part of that. Uh, so smoking doesn't just cause lung cancer, it causes uh, heart disease and uh, strokes. Second issue of patients with um, uh, schizophrenia is, is their diet, um, uh, and that's why diet is important. They often have a poor diet. Um, and we talked about obesity, and obesity and poor diet linked with, um, uh, linked with all the issues of getting diabetes, and all the issues of being overweight. Um, and so that's that's the, the second big killer of, of patients with um, with schizophrenia. And then there's all the lifestyle issues of of, 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 of actually um, exercise uh, and, and, uh, and doing the things that actually keep us fit and well. Patients with schizophrenia are much less likely to 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 to, to, to do exercise. So it's it, it, it's in some ways that we now in in in, 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 in psychiatry. Needs to be focusing just as much on our patients' physical health as, our, as their mental health, as their physical health that they're, that they're going to die from. Mm -hmm. And that's just the figure of obesity in patients with schizophrenia. And as you can see, the, the normal weight is, a, is, is under 20%. Um, and, and the obese is over 50%, but three quarters, over three quarters of overweight. This is used for tobacco, and, and that's just interesting. Use of tobacco is up in all conditions. Um, this is the use of tobacco from the states, but actually, patients with schizophrenia, you've got 70% of patients with schizophrenia smoking. They're also smoking other disorders, but, but the schizophrenia is the one. And why? I talked about their lifestyle, I talked about medication, but actually, another issue is. is, is Poor access to, to health. Patients with schizophrenia don't necessarily go to their GPs, um, and, and, and actually, there's a there's a, a real stigma issue with um, uh, accessing healthcare. I was just talking to the junior doctors in in, in St Anne's, talking about if somebody gets ill, um, they ring up the hospital to arrange for patients to be admitted, and they say that, 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 that their response is a sigh on the end of the phone. 
and, uh, and then the descriptions sit in, 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 in pool, or we need to get them back to St. Anne's as quickly as possible. Well, it's outrageous if there's a sign on the end of the phone. Why should a patient with from St. Anne's be any different from a patient being admitted anywhere else? I agree they need to come back to St. Anne's when they're well, but actually not as soon as possible. There should be no different when they come back to St. Anne's any more than anybody else. So, actually, even here today, the experience of patients with mental health is that there's a growing from physical health services. They're seen as difficult. Um, and a sense that as soon as humanly possible they'll get back to a, a, a psychiatric hospital which clearly doesn't have the resources to look after physical health. And this was brought home to me um, in, in a very powerful way when I was a junior doctor um, in London and I, I picked up one of my patients, she was a 55 year old lady, had a pneumonia. They clear pneumonia, she got a temperature um, uh, uh, and a nose to her chest, she got clear signs of and I arranged for it to be transferred to the medical ward for treatment. And she uh, um, was, uh, with, with the hospital I worked in, had patients, um, I had, had psychiatric wards in the same hospital as, 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 as the medical ward, so it actually wasn't that difficult. And then I went to see her the next day, and, uh, and uh, uh, to my absolute horror, that uh, she had no treatment to start it. She hadn't been given any antibiotics, she had just been moved from one ward to another. Uh, and uh, I made a fuss, and she did start her treatment, but she died later that day um, of, of, of pneumonia, completely, completely unnecessarily. Um, and, and again, just a sense of that she had schizophrenia, that, that actually she was somehow less deserving of treatment, and quite a lot went on in the, but that, that remained a real problem. So stigma, this, this issue about access to treatment, remains, a, remains an issue that then compounds the, the lifestyle and, and medication issues. And then the final issue is how dangerous patients with schizophrenia are. And, and <coughs> there's absolutely no doubt that all of us will read articles of, of absolute outrage of, of, uh, of, of someone being killed or harmed by somebody with schizophrenia, and then there'll be a report saying, oh, this patient had poor care and, 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 and services are dreadful, and that, that probably happens at, at two or three times a year. So it, 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 it's, not, it's not helpful. Um, the, 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 the chances of, of, of a patient with schizophrenia being involved in a violent, um, oh, 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 do it the other way around. The chances of a patient with schizophrenia not being involved in a violent episode in the course of one year is 99.73%. So if, 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 if you were uh, uh, worrying about the patient next door to you with schizophrenia, each year there would be less than a quarter of 1% of that patient on average would, would be involved in violence, not homicide, that, that, that's violence. So the vast majority of patients with schizophrenia, individuals with schizophrenia, um, aren't involved in, in, in violence. However, there is a, a so who is involved in violence? Why do we get so caught up in this? <coughs> um, well, the, these are, this is the risk factors of violence. And so if we want to protect the public from violence, what we should be doing is looking up young men um, who've been drinking. And it's young men who've been drinking that are perpetrators of the vast majority of violence in, in the UK, without any doubt, the vast, vast majority. Um, young men who've been drinking, um, uh, who've been violent before, um, and, and, and it is linked with, with low socio social economic status. Um, so if you can see the rhyme club might sort of question that, but, but the, 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 the it, 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 it's young men drinking um, that are violent. But there, there, there is an increased risk if you've got schizophrenia and you and you abuse substances, particularly schizophrenia and substance misuse, that, that does increase the risk compared to the general population. So we can't say that schizophrenia is at no increased risk of violence, but it's much, much less than, 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 than other factors. And patients with schizophrenia are 14 times more likely to be a victim of violence than they are to be the perpetrator of violence. 14 times more likely. So uh, actually it's really important that we, 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 we put it into a context. So not denying that they're involved. And actually one of the roles that, that I have as a, as, as, as a, as a consultant psychiatrist is thinking, oh, is this individual going to be a risk uh, to others? Uh, and what do I need to do? But also remembering they're much more likely to be a risk from others. And this is this is the issue of violence. If there is no violence, this is this is uh, an American study, so there are slightly different figures. But if somebody has about any mental illness, the, the, the prevalence of violence over a year was 7.3 percent of an individual. If you had schizophrenia, it, 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 it doubled. 
if you had substance misuse, it, it, it was five times more likely. So patients using drugs or alcohol is five times more likely than the average. But actually, major mental disorder and substance misuse was a, was a, was a, was a, was a, is, 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 is a problem. Um, and so when we see patients with schizophrenia, that's another reason to, to make sure we do our, do our best to stop uh, substance misuse being an issue. And so, I suppose what I've hoped that you now know a bit more than you do about what schizophrenia is. You know that it isn't, it isn't rare. Um, there are lots that can be done. The treatment has benefits as well as, as, as problems. There are real issues about physical health problems in schizophrenia. And that there, we can't ignore the issue about violence and, and schizophrenia, but it actually in the media is hugely 